When the scale doesn't move after days or maybe even weeks of effort, it can leave you feeling pretty disappointed and frustrated, right? And one of the keys to success of your weight loss or your fitness journey is knowing when to focus on the scale and when not to. And so today, I'm gonna share nine ways to measure your progress without even stepping foot on the scale. Welcome to the V Shred Better Body, Better Life podcast, where we help you live your best life while working on your health and fitness goals. We're here to make your journey fun and inspiring. What's going on? Vince Sant here, co-founder of V Shred, and I'm super excited to have you here on the latest episode of the V Shred Better Body, Better Life podcast for a special little presentation about non-scale ways to measure progress. Because I know that I mean, after working with thousands of people who are going through a weight loss journey of their own, the number on the scale can do a number on your mind. And so today, I'm going to share nine ways to measure your progress without even stepping foot on the scale. Cool? Before I jump into the first one, I actually want to say that the scale is not necessarily something that I think you have to avoid. Um, I just think people focus on it too much. I don't think you should throw your scale in the trash or anything. I don't need. I don't think you need to go to any extremes like that. Uh, I just don't think you need to weigh yourself every single day, let alone multiple times a day, because your body's going to fluctuate, right? And progress is not necessarily linear. You're not going to be in better shape every single day. You're not going to be see a lower number on that scale every single day. But over time, what you want to see is the number on that scale going down. Right. If you have a lot of weight to lose, if you don't have a lot of weight to lose, you're going to be replacing your fat with muscle and you're going to stay around the same weight, but but change body composition. That's a completely different story. But if you have 50 pounds to lose, what you want to see is week by week, your weight gradually going down. Right. So if you're losing one to two pounds a week and you're weighing yourself every Friday or every Sunday or every Monday at the same time of the day. That's a good way to measure your progress. But if you're weighing yourself every single day, stop doing that. Number one, and probably the best way to gauge progress, and one of the most rewarding, in my opinion, is recognizing how your clothes are fitting. Because if your clothes start fitting differently, there is no denying that you are getting better results, right? If you have jeans that are usually way too tight, or jeans that you normally can't even fit into, and now all of a sudden you can't fit into those because the jeans that you're used to wearing are becoming a little too large, or you have completely changed belt loops, like you're you're at a different notch on your belt now, or the shirts that used to fit really tight are now becoming a little loose, and you can start looking at that those clothes that you used to wear 10 years ago, and you can actually wear some of them now. That's a telltale sign that you're getting results, right? And it feels good. Um, and, and one thing that you can also do is you can measure yourself. That's the, that's the second one that I wanted to talk about is measurements are a great way to just see how different areas of your body are responding to what you're doing. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to rely on the size of your waist or the size of your thighs or the size of your arms or anything like that. Um, but it can be good if you have like a, a problem area and you do really want to focus on losing weight in a certain area, you can measure it and you can see what kind of progress you're getting. But I do also want to throw in there that spot reduction of fat is not a thing. Okay. So you can train different parts of your body. You can train muscle groups. You can build muscle in specific areas. You can spot build. You cannot spot reduce. Okay. Where you burn fat is going to come down to your genetics, right? Some people carry more fat in their bellies. Some people carry more fat in their arms. Some people carry more fat in their low back or their legs, right? Where you carry the majority of your fat is going to come down to your genetics, and there's no getting around that. And so if you do want to get rid of that specific part of fat, what you have to do is you have to focus on total body fat loss, okay? But... One thing that's nice about measuring your body is that you may not necessarily see a change in the scale. You may not necessarily see any big changes in the shirt size that you're wearing. But if you're measuring your upper thigh once a week or however often you're measuring it, which I do recommend measuring probably once a week, you might notice that, hey, 
you lost a half inch off of your upper thighs and you didn't even realize it. And so that's a good way to stay motivated and get excited. And it's a small win. And you could even call it a big win that you should celebrate because that means that what you're doing is working. That means that you are burning fat. That means that you um, are probably building muscle, which is speeding up your metabolism. What you're doing is moving you in the direction that you want to be, even if maybe the scale isn't showing you the same result, right? So that's the second one. Third one, and this one's going to be more internal. This one's going to probably take a little bit of reflection, and that is your mood. How do you feel? And so one thing that I really want you to tune into is how you feel as you work out more and more, how you feel as the days and weeks go by when you are eating properly, when you are getting to the gym and you are working out, right? Because one of the biggest benefits to getting in shape is being happier. There's the whole thing of like, you know, people like talk about like runner's high. Well, there's the same thing when you just work out. It's called endorphins. And they get released with every single workout that you do. And yeah, some workouts are going to suck. Some workouts are going to be tiring. Some workouts you're not going to feel like doing it. And you're going to get a bad workout. And then other workouts, it's going to feel great. And you're going to feel lighter. And you're going to feel happier. And you're going to feel those endorphins. And you're going to get that that runner's high. Or if you're working out at the gym, that that lifter's high. Or that at-home workout workouter's high. Right? You're going to feel good. Right? So that's the third one. Um, the fourth one, and this one is super important, is uh, getting better sleep. Because when you're challenging your body properly, what you're going to find is that after you have an active day, you're going to find it easier to fall asleep and you're going to get better sleep. That's a byproduct of being more active. When was the last time that, like, think of like the last super hard workout that you had? And how you slept that night, right? Or right when you got back from that workout, how badly did you want to take a nap? I can't tell you. So I'm doing a triathlon like a month from when I'm recording this. And swimming has been really hard. I've never been a swimmer. And my first swim workout was supposed to be like a 40-minute easy swim. It was not supposed to be something that I was supposed to strain myself. But I don't know how to swim very well. Like, I don't know swim form. I can swim, right? But I don't know how to swim well. I don't know how to breathe properly. I don't know what proper stroke form is. So I got done with that 40-minute easy, quote-unquote, easy swim, and I was dead. And I'm not kidding. I got home, and I think I, think I got home from the gym. It was like 6 o'clock or something like that. And I think I slept until like 10 p.m. And so I, you shouldn't do that because if you sleep until 10 p.m., if you sleep from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., that's a four-hour nap. That's that's basically a sleep. That's not a nap. And then you're going to find it hard to actually fall asleep at night. So I would not recommend doing that. If you are going to get back from a, a tough workout and you are going to take a nap, generally what they say is the best nap is 20 minutes because it's just long enough to get you into a deep sleep for a second, but it's not long enough to um, make you feel groggy, right? You can't enter like a, a REM cycle that quickly. Right. So 20 minute nap. But point is, when you work out harder, when you push your body harder, um, you're going to find that you are more tired at night. And when you're more tired at night, you're going to fall asleep faster. And when you're more tired at night, you're going to stay asleep more easier and you're going to be a lot more uh, restful as opposed to restlessness. And actually, I don't have it on right now. I will. As of now, I do have it on, but I actually do it, use a tra a sleep tracker. We can talk about this in another episode, but I track my sleep every single night and I see what my activity that day, how it affected my sleep. I think sleep is probably the third most important aspect of getting in shape. I think nutrition is number one, workouts are number two, and sleep is number three. Um, sleep is a telltale sign. Getting good sleep is a telltale sign that you are being more active and you're doing what your body required from you, right? Fifth one, everyday tasks become easier. And I think this is especially one for our, for our older folks out there. Um, but I would not say it's limited to the older folks because even myself, I recognize this, right? And 
when I recognize it, it's because I've been doing stuff that makes my daily life easier. As you get stronger, as you become more mobile, everything that you do in your daily life is going to become easier. Walking up the stairs is going to become easier. Keeping up with kids or grandkids is going to become easier. And I think a lot of people overlook these kind of things. Even even, I don't know, lifting up, carrying a purse or carrying a bag or a backpack or carrying stuff out to your car or carrying groceries into your house. I think people overlook the fact that there's a lot of things that we do as humans throughout the day, throughout the week and are not in our normal routine that require strength. Picking kids up requires strength. That kid might be 30, 40 pounds, right? And you got to pick them up and you got to carry them. It's a lot of weight to carry. If you're not working out and you're not getting stronger, that's going to be tough. And so as you work out and as you get stronger, that becomes easier. And so I think that's a major win that not a lot of people focus on. So focus on that stuff, right? Count that as a win. It goes back to what, I mean, The whole this whole thing is about you don't have to only rely on the scale to have a lower number for you to feel like you're progressing. If you are carrying groceries into your house with more ease, that is a win. But the next one is your body and your joints don't hurt as much as before. We all, as we get older, deal with more and more injuries. That's just that's just part of aging, right? But it doesn't mean that you always have to suffer from those nagging injuries that have been there for I don't care how long, right? Whether it's been a month, a year, 10 years, or 30 years, just because you've had quote unquote bad knees for the last 10 years of your life does not mean that you have to keep having bad knees. Let's say you're 250 pounds right now and you cut that down to 200 pounds or you're 200 pounds right now and you cut that down to 140 pounds. Do you think that that 50 or 60 pounds that you cut from your body is not going to have an effect on how it feels when you walk and how your knees feel? How much easier is everything going to become and how much better are you going to feel when that extra weight is removed from you? You are walking around with a big weighted vest on you right now. That's going to be tough on anybody's body. That's going to be tough on anybody's joints, right? So as you lose that weight, and it doesn't have to be the whole 50 or 60 pounds, even like 10 pounds can make a difference because you're going to find that it's easier to move around you're not becoming out of breath as easily. You're going to notice that you might become a little bit more flexible. And so little things like putting on your socks or taking your shoes off, it's much easier. Or putting on a shirt or taking off a shirt or anything, it becomes easier because you're losing that extra weight and you're becoming more mobile, right? That is a win. Now, the next one, and this is a big one because usually this one is leads to people starting their weight loss journey, and that is looking different in pictures. So what usually, not I shouldn't say usually, but what sometimes gets people to start a weight loss journey is they see a picture of themselves and they don't recognize themselves and they decide, okay, that's it. I have to do something about this. Well, a lot of times that's what gets people to start their fitness journey, right? And so one thing that I think people don't focus on as much as they're progressing is how much better they look in pictures because it's a big one, right? As you lose 10, 20, however many pounds, you're going to look different. And so, I mean, one thing that I always say to people when they are starting a weight loss journey is to take pictures in the beginning because a lot of times people... Like we'll get clients who sign up for like one of our coaching p- programs and we'll be like, hey, and, 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 and what will happen is they'll lose 50 pounds and they'll send us a bunch of after pictures because they're super proud of how they look now and they're super down to take pictures and send us their pictures to use as like testimonials. I'll be like, hey, do you have any before pictures? Can we see some pictures of you at your heaviest so we can show people what's possible? We can show people what you did and we can help motivate them as well. And they're like, Man, to be honest with you, I didn't really take pictures before. I was embarrassed to take pictures. I didn't feel comfortable taking pictures. And so I just avoided it. If that's you, my best recommendation is start taking them pictures. 
Because what's going to happen is you're going to lose that weight and you're going to look better and you're going to want to take pictures when you lose that weight. And then you're going to wish, and we hear this all the time, you're going to wish that you did take pictures when you were at your heaviest so that you could see how far you've come. And when it comes to see, looking different in your pictures, a lot of people notice their weight loss in their face first. Um, and so that's one to look out for, um, which is why I don't want you to be afraid of the camera because you might find that even five, 10 pounds makes a pretty noticeable difference in how slim your face looks. Um, and so it usually translates to you looking different in pictures, right? And then the other thing is you might notice that your clothes start looking better on you when you have your photos taken. So seeing how you look in pictures is a big one, right? And definitely something that should be celebrated, okay? For this one, I'm talking about, so this is number eight. What I'm talking about is completing more of your workout, right? Because when you first get started with the workout program, it can be tough to do the entire workout. Here at VShred, we generally don't, we don't promote any type of workout that is longer than 20, 30 minutes. Um, if you are going to go to the gym and you are okay and you do have the time to work out longer, sure, um, we'll give you an hour long workout at the gym. But if you're someone who's strapped for time and you don't like working out and you're just getting into it, we understand the mental side of this is way more important because you have to be able to stick to it. It has to be a sustainable plan. That's what drives long term results. So generally, we would recommend 20 to 30 minute workouts, right? And those 20 minute, 20, 30 minute workouts can be pretty intense. And so what happens is people struggle to get through the entire workout. And I can use my parents as an example. My parents actually followed our move program and our move program is five workouts a week that are all 20 minutes or less. And they're all at home. It's all body weight workouts. And I lead you through every single second of every single workout. And so in the beginning, my parents they couldn't really push themselves that much. And they were struggling to do some of the exercises and couldn't do some of the exercises. I remember specifically my dad struggled with um, jump lunges. And then as time went on, he got better at them. And all of a sudden, he and my mom were able to do the entire workout, do every single exercise, and they were able to do every single second of every single workout. So they got stronger. And so if you're currently finding it really tough to finish a workout, get through a workout, whatever, one sign that you are getting in better shape is that you're able to do an entire workout. That's your cardiovascular health getting healthier. That's your muscular endurance and muscular strength building. Because what gaining strength means is gaining muscle. And what gaining muscle means is a faster metabolism. And what a faster metabolism means is more sustained weight loss, right? The key to losing weight is metabolic health, right? So as you build that strength and you build the muscle and you speed up your metabolism, what's gonna happen is you're going to burn more calories every single day from less exercise. So build strength and if you see your workouts becoming easier to, to just push yourself harder and also just to finish the workout, that's a win and you should celebrate it. And then number nine, this one is going to be about your mindset. And this is just going to be around becoming sharper. It feels like you are getting, your mind is getting sharper. Because fact of the matter is, a lot of people deal with like brain fog and fatigue and just feeling down about themselves when they gain weight. But when you start working out, and when you start eating right and fueling your body with proper nutrients, all of a sudden, it's not only your, your, your body that's going to be improving, but your mind is going to become more clear. Your mind is going to become sharper. Your mind, you're going to become happier. Things are going to become like more clear of, of what you want to do and how you're going to do it. And you're going to find it easier to do the things that you didn't necessarily want to do before and all the things that maybe didn't interest you, now they're starting to interest you just because you're more active and you have a new outlook on life. Also, another thing is you might feel more grounded. Um, a lot of times people feel like they're they're getting in shape, losing 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds, however many, how many pounds you want to lose. It feels so far away that it just feels like this, this, this dream that maybe will happen one day, but they don't truly believe it will, right? 
when you actually start losing weight, it all of a sudden feels like you're on your path. It feels like your journey has truly begun. It's like the path to enlightenment, right? And it helps you feel more grounded. It helps you feel better about yourself. It helps you feel like you've found your, your not necessarily your purpose, um, but you've just found what you should be doing that makes you feel good, helps you look better, helps you get healthier. It's just overall good for you. And when you start feeling better mentally, it's something that um, I think you have to celebrate, right? And so those are just nine different signs to watch for when you're trying to lose weight. Because remember, that scale can fluctuate anywhere from one to, I'd say, five or six pounds on any given day. So it's best to not get hung up on what that number is and to instead focus on the non-scale victories as often as you can and then like I said, if you do want to weigh yourself once a week on Friday morning or on Sunday night or on, I would generally recommend weighing yourself in the morning because you're fasted, um, weighing yourself Monday morning, first thing, same time in the morning. And every week you can track what your weight is looking like. And what you want to see is you want to see a gradual decline with your weight. If you have a lot of weight to lose, like I said, if it's body composition changes that you're aiming for, it's a little bit of a different story, but if you do need extra help with getting on track with your weight loss goals, I have certified personal trainers that are available to create a customized meal plan for you based on your body right now. It's the V-Shred Custom Diet Plan, and it's one of our most popular services and has literally already helped hundreds of thousands of men and women to lose weight while actually eating foods that they enjoy. That's the big piece of it because we do all the legwork for you, figure out your calories, your macros types of foods that you should be eating to burn fat most of the time. And then we also figure out ways to work in if you love pancakes or if you love bacon or if you love ice cream or candy or whatever it is. And so if you guys want to check that out and see how it all works, just uh, should be a link down in the description below um, for more details. Um, but that's all for today's episode. I want to thank you for tuning in to the V Shred Better Body, Better Life podcast, and I will see you or talk to you next time. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of V Shred's Better Body, Better Life podcast. Whether you're doing one of our programs, taking our supplements, or just doing things on your own, tune in every week for exclusive content with Vince, V Shred trainers, and special guests as they share valuable tips around motivation, workouts, food, and living a healthier lifestyle. See you next time.